how to read and write what are usually called chemical equations. I will also typically call them chemical reactions. We emphasize chemical equations because we will do math with them and that's coming up. But first, let's watch another video of a reaction. Coils of magnesium metal ribbon are added to two test tubes. The test tube on the left contains six molar hydrochloric acid. The test tube on the right contains 0.3 molar hydrochloric acid. They both react forming hydrogen gas. Yep, the video is over. Um, and I just want to point out in this video that this is a very clear example where that magnesium ribbon, that's your reactant, is being consumed. So uh, there's no magnesium left. And that's a classic uh, evidence of chemical reaction. All right, so back to here. And this one, so this is an example chemical reaction that we're talking about. We have magnesium solid that was added plus two uh, hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, one of the seven strong acids that we'll be memorizing. Uh, it is in the aqueous phase, and we're forming magnesium chloride aqueous and hydrogen gas. And you can see the hydrogen gas bubbles forming very rapidly here and slowly. And uh, one of the things we will not talk about is really how fast a chemical reaction takes place, how, how long it takes. That's more of a topic for second semester general chemistry once you get there. But let's talk about some terminology for a chemical reaction. So first off, the things on the left are reactants. And typically for us, they are the things that you start with. We typically don't start with any products, although it is possible to start with them. But the things on the right are products. Um, the arrow here uh, stands for, uh, I, when we interpret this in terms of English, to produce. And it can also be used to signify that a change has occurred. And, um, and I wanted to note up here, so this section is called How to Read and Write Chemical Equations, but really we're also talking about chemical reactions. And uh, we use the terms interchangeably. I usually write chemical reactions. I occasionally write chemical equations. And I mention reactions so much that I have an abbreviation for reactions, Rx and S. A couple other things, uh, definition of terms here. So we've seen this before, but this is for the solid phase. So S is going to be equal to solid. And A, uh, let's do the other ones. Let's do L. And I try and do L as cursive as much as I can to differentiate it from a one. But uh, again, as long, so it, what else would be in parentheses there? That's for liquid. And G is for gas. And we've talked about all these phases before, but just so you know, we're defining our terms. The last one is AQ. And AQ stands for aqueous. And aqueous means, so aqueous, which means dissolved in water. And we'll have more to say about that, what that means coming up. And, uh, but these are the basic terms that we'll use when we talk about a chemical reaction. We have some more to say about chemical reactions, and that's specifically that a chemical reaction has uh, two interpretations. We're using the same chemical reaction here. And I will ask you about these two interpretations on the homework, and this is exactly what I'm looking for. There's the atom or molecule interpretation using, and this particular one will use full names, so we will get an additional chance to practice our nomenclature here. 
So in this reaction, if we were to translate it into English, what we would say is that one atom of magnesium solid the plus sign translates as reacts with two molecules of hydrochloric acid in the aqueous phase. And you could also write two molecules of aqueous hydrochloric acid, that works. You could also do solid magnesium here. And we'll try that on the product side, I think. Uh, to produce, that's what the uh, arrow translates as. One formula unit, remember this is an ionic compound and ionic compounds have formula units to produce one formula unit of, and here we'll do it, aqueous magnesium chloride. And there's a dog hair there from my puppy. and one, mo one molecule of hydrogen gas. And you could just write hydrogen, but um, it's, we know that hydrogen is a gas, but that's best. Uh, that is a full sentence, so we'll even put a period at the end of it. Now let's do the mole interpretation using formulas, again, both of which will be asked for on the homework. So, uh, and we'll even use numbers here. In the mole interpretation, it's now one mole of magnesium. And solid. Reacts with two moles of HCl aqueous. And you only have to use the phases if they're given. If they're not given, which will be the case on the homework, don't worry about phases. Uh, to produce uh, one mole of magnesium chloride. Aqueous. And one mole of hydrogen. And we won't go too much into it now, but we will be using, when I talk about it being a chemical equation, we will be creating a, what are conversion factors, our old favorite, out of this statement. And you might imagine that one mole of magnesium, skip, 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 produces one mole of magnesium chloride. Now let's do this, let's do this one. Two moles of HCl aqueous. produces one mole magnesium chloride and how you turn that into a unit conversion factor is produces this this basically becomes equal to if you start with two moles of HCl you can produce one mole of magnesium chloride and so it becomes two moles HCl per, or we can even write uh, reacted here, although we don't typically after the beginning do that. Two moles HCl reacted per one mole magnesium chloride produced. And you can see that there are a whole bunch of unit conversion factors that we can do from this. 
we will spend a lot more time, but I just wanted to introduce and make that connection as to why we're doing this. The other reason to do this is because uh, this, for me, anytime I can read something or translate it into English or a language, it helps my brain understand what it really means.